yourselves Don't be all what we sell What a country and tell Not your beautiful things All the gold till that's rich You will enjoy your friendship Messi, it's the new year and we're starting of course Mainland Grenada, we're exploring of course. And gentleman in front of me. Basically, yes, we've been trying to get him, right? Oh, man, you're talking about getting with Shenodil Palang oh long, long time. God. But finally, he took up one of the Duke. Finally. Yeah. He's back home and he's staying with us. He's going to tell us more about that. He'll tell us more about it. But I remember while he was in Seba. Seba. Seba, right. We call him Angus. We need information. The great Angus Martin. We need some information. We want to do a tour in Grenada. And of course, the thing about it, any question you ask him, he's right there to serve you. Mm -hmm. Even though he does not have the answer straight away, I know for a fact he's going to call back, he's going to message back, he's going to email you back with the information. And he sent us the entire tour of St. George's. We did what we could have read and then try to translate but of course he's here in living colors and we are so excited is history lessons today yeah. with the great man himself angus martin thanks for having having me i well, am happy home. Yes, thank you i am happy to be here with you guys as usual um <laughs> and to share a little bit of saint george's um and the history of saint george's and grenada um, I grew up in this area, um, actually I know these graves pretty well <laughs> because we used to have to, we used to come and tie our goats out here, so, um, so we played over on the hill there, we used to go at the top of the hill, guys at the bottom would shoot you, we used to play ball ball and then you roll down the hill, um, so this is, this is the neighborhood I grew up in, all fort we used to run around, all the cemetery used to be our playground. And I, yes, I remember you told me that you used to sit up there uh -huh. and skate down the hill in the yes, cemetery. Yes, yes, we had that little hill right above the bust of um, Bishop. We used to be doing that. Yeah. So that is, like I said, I remember one time I got a cut and I went home crying and my father said, um, don't come crying to me because he looked out from the window in the house and he saw his eyes. So what you guys were doing? <laughs> 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 but yeah, so mm -hmm. like PBC, the, the court at PBC used to be where we played football and everything. So the whole area was where we ran, you know, around and, and did everything. So a lot of these places uh, really bring back lots of memories for me being here. Yeah. So. Lovely. All right, so tell us what tour are we going to be doing today? Okay. Um, so when people talk about taking a tour of St. George, people might probably drop right inside of the city in the market square and, and go out from there. But I actually like to start from here um, and walk down Church Street because Church Street is really one of the main streets and it can give you a really good view of the history when you just look at the different places that connect the Church Street. And the reason I like to start up here is because the Queen's Park or the Stadium. Um, because I think geologically, um, this is, you know, part of when we look at the fact that this is a volcanic island, this is where some of it began. And you can look around and see um, one of the few flat areas on the island because of its uh, volcanic origin and it was a volcano. So I like to start at this area to show like the beginnings of, of St. George's, the beginnings of Grenada in a way. Um, looking at the hills of Dabo. Um, you know, now we have the big stadiums, people barely remember the Queen's Park, which dates back to the late 1800s when it was given to the people of St. George's and Grenada as a recreation area and horse racing and other sports and things, cricket, that's where a lot of it began. Um, cricket and football basically began in this, in this area. So what, it was given by the Queen? Well, it's a little confusing. We're not really sure and I, we need to take a look at some of the deeds and stuff to really because the association, the fact that Dabo, we know that a lady, Dabo, a Miss Dabo, owned property, and that's why the name of the area has that name today. Um, but the, the data that we have is that it was given by the government to the, to the board. They used to have tongue boards and things like that to run different parts of the towns and different towns across the islands. And it was given at that point, I think it was in the 1880s, when the area was given you yeah, know, and this used to be a government property too. The government ended up owning this estate because remember, this estate connected to the hospital, so the government always owned that. 
so so the the, the 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 connection with Dabo is a little bit confusing, but it definitely is a connection. I'm not quite sure what it is as yet. So it's one of those things that we need to to figure out exactly how the Dabo came into it. We have some old images that look at that show you the um, the river, and we actually there is an old image that show another stream that used to go through the park so it seems like they may have divert, um, diverted the water into just this one area which it would be something to look at because we know we have a lot of flood in here mm -hmm. you know did that have something to do with it back then mm -hmm. you know as opposed to you know we've channeled all of the water into one space so did that have something to do with with all the flooding that we have now i don't know i'm just speculating uh, that could be a possibility and something that we might want to take a look at because history helps you you know, the past is a key to the future. It helps us understand where we are and how this place came to be. You know, like why is the cemetery here? Because it probably was a hospital. There are also a bunch of churches down here. You know, so it make it easy for us to... Um, this place didn't just happen accidentally. Yeah, you know, this was... So, exactly, because of these other things. You know. Uh, uh, Moringa? Well, trees, I think it is. Uh, it is. It is Moringa. It is? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's very healthy. Yeah. Um, I was told it, it, good, it is good for cancer. Yeah. And other diseases. This community back here is pretty new. We talked in um, early 70s, uh, maybe late 60s or early 70s when this community came about. So remember, all of this area would have been for the cemetery. Uh, but you have some of the community, and there were really small wooden houses first. And then people started building in, you know, and some of it is even in the cemetery. If you go down a little further, you would see some of the houses in actual the, the area of the cemetery. So, so there's another cemetery? I guess in a way... I'm not even going to pass by the cemetery in the night. <laughs> what you worried about? They're all in two. No problems. Nobody's coming out. They see always say, so I pass by the cemetery in the night, but don't go into the church in the night. No. So one, of the, one of the things, in, in, um, when we used to have, put our goats and stuff here, I used to have to bring them in. My brother would bring them in the morning to tie them out and I had to go pick them up because I didn't want to get out of bed early. But there are times when I forgot the goats. So I would go home, I'm all clean or whatever, and my father's like, hey, where the goats? And I'm like, shoot. So you have to come back to the cemetery and it's dark. I used to be afraid. So I go get a few friends, uh -huh. then come with them to go find the goats, bring the goats home. Because there's no way I was coming here. Somebody like basically be a dad. No. He was going to dress up in this white sheet and wait there for you. Uh, I certainly will. <laughs> I did mention it to the people that you're staying with us now, but you didn't speak about that. You have some great news for us. <laughs> um, I guess um, I've just been appointed to be the director of the Grenada National Museum. Yeah, 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 you know about So I, the museum has been closed, so the objective first and foremost to get it reopened mm -hmm. um, and build a museum from there as a major heritage institution. So it's my second go at it and hopefully I am much more successful this time um, in making sure that the museum is the place where we have access to a history and culture. Yeah. I guess the museum in Karakou as well, right? Well, the museum in Karakou presents a problem of sorts because it's not government. The one in Grenada is government because of legislation. So that we would have to work towards, you know, and talk to the people of Karakou um, and see what, are they, what they want to do in terms of being part of this larger museum. But I think, you know, I, I, I think from just having conversations and stuff that Karakou Museum needs help as well, um, especially Plenty of it is. So we definitely need to take a look at Karakou Museum and any other museums across the island that, that we can bring in as part of this larger project to make sure that we preserve um, and display Grenada's history and culture. Okay. So we really should never be in a situation like we are today mm -hmm. where when people come in, they're like, where's the museum? And we're like, we really don't have much to show you. I think it's really, uh, it's embarrassing for a country that's about to celebrate 50 years of its independence and we don't have anything to show you know so that's big up to the new government yes that's another thing mm -hmm. uh, and another reason why rena will continue supporting you you're going on the right path i mean how could you have our history our heritage how could you have that enclosed people coming here to learn about who we are to learn about our past and we close it up 
Come on, we have to do better than that. Mister Angus, I'm in first vote for Karaku Museum. Of course. We just left over by the stadium, Kirani James Stadium, former Queens Park, and we are now close to Angus's house. But he don't want to show us the house. But we'll so we'll speak up on the cemetery. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, this, you know, we have different parts of the St. George's Cemetery. It's pretty big. Uh, this is it's like on three tiers. There's the bottom, the middle, and then all the way up at the top. This part is actually the oldest part of um, the cemetery. And if you look, you will find some of the old graves that go back to the early 1800s. Um, because, and I think it probably developed here too, because there used to be the first hospital was not too far away in this area. This is where the first hospital was, um, that was built by the, by the French. Um, and it lasted all the way into the British period, all the way close to the end of the uh, 1700s. So the hospital basically was in this area, and I think as a result of the hospital being here, the cemetery developed. So because that was the first hospital? The first hospital. Do you know why it was built here? Was it because it's windy? Um, no, uh, this is actually pretty interesting. The hospital was built here because the plantation that was connected to the hospital was basically the Queen's Park, coming all the way up to Old Fort. Um, and it was run by uh, missionaries. Mm -hmm. um, I forget the name of the fathers that ran it. Uh, but we actually have a, a plan of it that the French did. It was in the 8th, 1740s that it was, it was built. And it's interesting, you see these um, houses for the slaves. Mm -hmm. So the enslaved people actually ran the hospital in a sense. They're the one that took care of people. So they were everywhere. That was just something that we really don't think about. Mm -hmm. But if you really look at some of the evidence, you realize that enslaved labor was really running the island in a sense that they were the ones that were really running the hospital, taking care of the patients and stuff like that, because there was quite a few buildings um, or rooms for them in the hospital. So the fathers, um, they're the ones that ran the hospital, um, and they're the ones that, they to support the hospital, they had a plantation, which would have been the what, what we call today the Queen's Park and Dabo and all the way. And they, they, it was, there's, um, there used to be indigo um, been produced on that plantation, and sugar as well and you could see some of the ruins done by the river you would see the old there was even a lime kiln mm -hmm. that was there where they would process lime uh, to build as well as part of the manufacturing process for sugar okay so in those days they did not buy the produce they propagated it they planted yes. it right. themselves right um, and that's they needed money to run the hospital because it was a mm -hmm. government hospital and they, that's where they got the resources from uh, there were actually some controversies with the brothers. Uh, what was the name of the hospital, sorry? Um, Lopito. They just, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it had... I think it was named after the brothers. I uh, forget what the brothers' names were. Um, the brothers of St. John or something like that. Um, that ran the hospital. And, and it was a, they were brought in from Martinique to run the hospital. It was like 1740s is when they really um, actually built the hospital. There may have been some other things that functioned before. Mm -hmm. But that's when they set up the first hospital. Um, there was some controversy with the brothers. Uh, they were accused of keeping some of the money for themselves, kind of thing, and not using it in the hospital. And, so, and they actually, were, the hospital was taken away from them, and they were it was run by a board. And when the British came in, it was um, eventually got run by the by the board. There's actually an interesting book that was written about some enslaved people on that plantation, because once the government, when the British invaded and they took over the hospital. The government, um, the the priest from Saint Mar from Martinique came down and tried to take the enslaved people and say they were theirs. Mm -hmm. um, and the because it would have been illegal for them to take it. So what they did, they got um, another enslaved or free person to steal the enslaved people from Grenada to take them to Martinique. And somebody wrote a book about that. Um, mm -hmm. It's a French. She. It's called Sugar Money. And so there's a book that tells a story of uh, a recreated story mm -hmm. of these enslaved people, how they were the whole idea of taking, coming to Grenada, and where they, I think it's Petit Harbor, which is Halifax Harbor, is where they ended up getting on a boat and taking them out to the island. Um, so there are lots of these little stories embedded in different places around. All right, yeah. so let's continue telling the story.
we're all and some of these like i said go back to the early 1800s so you make the sign. yeah it's this was Ooh, this big piece listening. this big piece was on top of here mm -hmm. so it stood up and then you had that piece on top of it so we used to climb up on it so we can get a height to fly your kite over here <laughs> <laughs> And somebody uh, said, hey, I'm standing on this Martin Bridge. Do you have any connection with it? Like, well, I don't know, but my great-grandfather was uh, Alexander Mars. So I'm not sure the connection, if there's any, but... But he was the harbor master and he used to live on top here, uh, Moncton. Um, which is where... Edison? Yeah. They actually yes. used to place called Martin's Bay that was named after him. Okay. Pandy Beach. Uh huh. That used to be called Martin's Bay. Okay. And the visitors are just some back in cruise ship Costa Fascinosa. Fascinosa. Fascino. Fascinosa. Yes. <laughs> Costa Fascinosa. Costa so it's Fascinosa. probably Italian. Yeah. The photograph, which probably dates back to the 1930s, right of this area, and. All of this is grass. Oh, really? Yes. You really wouldn't think that. So you're that, gonna share that with us? Yeah, I'm gonna share that photograph with you, so you could put it in the in the video. <laughs> but it's a really cool photograph. It's one of the ones that, because having grown up here and seen how the place has changed, it really brings back, you know, where this, how we've progressed or how we've changed. Not always progress in the sense of the best thing, but um, so it's a really good when we have some images uh, to show us you know what the place looked like i think the summer house was there as well that summer house has been around for for decades um, we have one here and there's one there used to be one in the central part and then there's one at the bottom as well um, but we do have an image from the 1930s which shows some house wasn't there at the bottom part i could share that with you as well um, just showing you how the place has changed and you know we had more the, 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 the cemetery was not, we didn't have these massive graves and stuff. Now you could see this from outer space, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so it has changed quite a bit and, and some of the older graves are just disappearing as well. So, let's go. Huh? Huh? Basically, you remember when we came the last time? This was being built. Yeah. Uh, I, can't, I can't remember how far they were. I don't know. They were plastering the outside. When so we that's came. like a third block that has been added to PBC. The first one is the old uh, vicarage, is what they used to call the bottom building, and that was built for that was built for the Catholic priests. Okay. Um, the Dominicans, I think, in the early set, uh, 1900, when they took over Grenada. Um, Winnie Redhead talks about it and says that it was built but with a lot of assistance from the congregation of the Catholic Church. They used to carry the stones and stuff to build it. So in 1948, they gave it to the Presentation Brothers to build PBC and they've added pieces ever since. And when I went to PBC, it was under 200 students. Now it's probably <laughs> close to 400 or something like that. I'm not quite sure how much, but it's really grown beyond um, you know, a lot, a lot of that was just bush. The PVC court, I think, I think there's a stuff about basketball having to do with PVC and starting off because I think maybe the rings that were there for basketball ended up on the court, and so there's some connection with the beginning of basketball. Okay. And okay, and the PVC and something Bishop like head. that. And there is a um, Morris Bishop um, bust of Morris Bishop. It's to the remains of Maurice Bishop and several of the others who were executed on um, Fort Rupert, Fort George at the uh, Fort Rupert at the time, now Fort George, uh, back to Fort George. Um, so there's a, the grave in order to symbolize where he was buried, but of course we do not know where the remains of Bishop and the others are. It's one of the most contentious issues stemming from the October 19th um, Bloody Wednesday and the execution. Mm -hmm. Hey, lover boy. Yeah, and so, so I think that's still one of the issues that the families of those who were executed would love to see resolved in order to um, come to some kind of um, peace, I guess, in knowing where the remains of their loved ones were. So, so that's definitely an issue. Um, this little hut here has a lot of history 
actually it's where the Corps of Cadets used to keep their guns and things like that. And in the 1970s, um, the early 1970s, there was an issue, and I don't remember it pretty well, but I think guns may have been removed from there, and they may have, uh, many of the, the, the people who had took the guns or whatever were not supporters of the area, they were part of the NDM. And I remember to talk about it, I, t I don't remember it really well, and maybe some of the older students uh, who later became part of the, um, the PRG would be able to tell a better story, but I knew as a little kid growing up, there was this issue of guns being taken and uh, Gary actually um, shut down the, the Corps of Cadets because he felt it was a, um, they were in opposition to him and it was a, 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 a force for him to contend with. So the cadets ended up being cut off. They were brought back in under the PRG, um, but then they were stopped again. And then some years later they were, it's, so now it's back again. So we've gone in and out of the cadets because of the fact that people felt maybe that young men were being militarized and cadets go back all the way to around 1910 this is when and I'm wrong again when people felt uh, in Europe uh, in the UK that it would be a good way to get people to understand to be ready for war and, and stuff like that so we've had cadet corps like beginning in GBSS and then throughout many of the schools so they didn't want to empower them basically. yes yes <laughs> um, this is the old the vicarate as it was called um, it looks a little bit different from how it was built because during Hurricane Janet they had a roof on top and that was destroyed and they re redid it in this way uh, but it's basically two floors the building looks a little out of place in terms of its architecture um, but again it's an early 1900s building uh, 1920 maybe um, so it's a British design? Well, yeah, it's, um, yeah, and it goes, like I said, it was the, the place where the uh, Catholic clergy um, stayed. Uh, when we go further down, we'll talk about the Priory, which would have been the original building where they, the Catholic clergy stayed, but then they moved up here once the Dominicans took over, I think, in the early 1900s. And, and even though this is called Church Street, it could have been called School Street as well, <laughs> because there are one, two, three, four schools wow. on this block. They, Name them. Uh, there is PBC, Presentation Brothers College, mm -hmm. uh, Mother Rose or St. George, George's RC Girls School. Mm -hmm. There's the Convent, um, and then there is Heinze School or St. George's Anglican School. Um, so these schools, basically, by the mid 1900s, all of these schools would have been here. Um, some of them were in different places at different times, but they are the foundation of education in St. George's, uh, primary and secondary education. Mother Rose, um, back in the day, it was uh, separate schooling for boys and girls. That was the thing at the time. They didn't want to mix boys and girls. We did that later on. Um, because it became do it because it was cost effective and we didn't have the resources. So later on we developed. Um, but if you look at all the Catholic, the early Catholic schools were all um, single gender. Uh, Mother Rose, even though it, it, you would, it would tell you that it dates to the late 1800s, the foundation of it would have been in the, in the early 1800s when um, primary education was started among um, the Catholic Church. Uh, the churches were the ones that really did a lot of the education of the emancipation because they were the only other institution on the island. Um, there's the old building, uh, one of the original buildings here, and that building was built in the 1890s and Maras after Maras Hill. He was a very rich Catholic and he um, funded that building in his will. Uh, so that's the, one of the first buildings and there's another older one, an, another one behind it, which is um, probably early 1900s. So those were the two primary buildings and then all of this, all the stuff around it have been added over the years. I think this may have been added in the 70s or at least 80s. This one at the front here. So, so we look down St. Jewel Street and this is one of the streets that take you all the way down to Melville Street. Well, it changes name at the bottom. 
Uh, Maloney Street is at the, the bottom part of it, but the Four Roads area, mm -hmm. um, very well known Jericho. in town. Mm -hmm. uh, Greenwich used to, Tony Greenwich used to live right up to the right of it on Grenville Street. Mm -hmm. um, and all these street names, St. Jules Street is actually one of the few French names of streets that remain in St. George's. Um, St. Saint, Saint Jules, I think maybe St. John's, and then Granny Tang Road, which is the little place that takes you up to the fort, which we can talk about when we're going up there. But other than that, all of the rest of the names are British. Um, Grenville would be named after, I think he was a British Prime Minister in the 1760s when the British took over and they renamed all of the streets. Okay. Church Street used to be called Hospital Street because it led to the hospital at the top. At the top. Mm -hmm. um, Church Street eventually just changed. Um, it may have been maybe the 1900s that it, that it became common. Of course, the hospital disappeared from there and the mm -hmm. hospital went somewhere so there was no longer a need. You know, as well as the Hospital Hill is what used to be called Old Fort. But then there were a series of redoubts out at the top, which is what the British defended from in 1779 when the French attacked. Um, so that became Old Fort. That's how Old Fort got its name okay. from there. I remember you mentioned Granitang Street or Granitang Road? Granitang Road. Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> I remember a time. The, um, I think that person worked with Flo or one mm -hmm. of the companies mm -hmm. and they asked him to go and fix something in Granite Tank Street and, and he, he went all, all the way, way to Granite because <laughs> he didn't know. I find it surprising that a lot of Grenadians yeah. don't know some of the streets, yeah. you know. Um, and of course, there is, there is Happy a New movement. Year. Oh, Mr. Green, <laughs> Happy New Year! <laughs> Good to see you. Likewise. Hi guys. Good, sir. Good to see you. Good. Yeah, you are yeah. Yes, yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Okay. So, it, and the only as piece of it that remains is all the way by the fort. So the fort was the central place in town. So everything led from there. Mm -hmm. So Melbourne Street and stuff wasn't a street to begin with. Um, all of that, the market square and stuff, that used to be a marsh. The the the, the real town in St. George's actually used to be on the Carinage, right by BB's crowd back and stuff. That's wow. where the market square was. Oh, really? Yes. That was where the first class their arms or where the, the troops trained so that was the spot where where things happened it wasn't until the 1740s that we actually moved to this part of the town once they got rid of the marsh wow. it used to be in that whole day it used to be called daytown okay. yeah so we had some of the changes that happened in, in, in the city um, a lot of buses touring today yes everybody's yeah. on a tour the tag of costa costa Costa... Uh, I can't remember. I forget the name. Ends with an A. <laughs> Fascinova. Fas. Fascinosa. 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 Yeah. Fascinated. <laughs> so this is the St. Joseph's Convent. Um, it dates to the 1880s, I think. Um, it is the first permanent um, secondary school for females, um, for girls. Um, it was started, they brought in, actually the Catholic Church brought in the Sisters of Clooney, may have been from Trinidad, I'm not sure, um, to start the school. And they also played a part in Mother Rose as well, because they came to run a secondary school and they, and they the, the, second, the primary school became more permanent when they set it up. So there was, and, and Mother Rose was somebody who was actually somebody's name, mm -hmm. one of the nuns None. who actually ran it and she was there for a few decades. So that's why it has the Mother Rose attached to it. So the Sisters of Clooney basically started, and this was the treasurer's house, I think. Um, and that was given, or they bought that or whatever, to start the, um, to start the convent. Um, it may have been church property, because as the church being moved here, remember that this is the one, this is the second Catholic church in St. George's. Actually, there were a few. No, this is the second one. Okay, the, the first, one the first right. Catholic church, we'll talk about it when we get down to the Anglican church. Oh, okay. That's the spot where the first Catholic church was. This, so this was the second Catholic church, and it's, it's gone through quite a bit of changes. Um, 
like this piece on the side here was added at some point, the piece on the other side was added. It used to have a tall steeple note at the top. Um, that was removed like in the 1930s. Um, and we see this fire. It's the largest church on the island. It's called uh, the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. What did um, um, Ivan do to it? Ivan, like it did many of the churches, um, because they have these large roofs, so they just removed the roofs. Um, uh, what they call, they refer to Hurricane Ivan as Hurricane Rufus. <laughs> Rufus, <laughs> <laughs> And removing the roofs from some of these larger buildings. So it took many years um, and very expensive to to replace these roofs and to make them secure. Um, I remember it was closed and I said to myself, that's okay, Catholic people are rich. <laughs> well, the, the Catholic I didn't church, realize there's two cannons there. Yes, these are cannons. They, they put these cannons as bottles. Basically, you see them on the carinage as well. Um, so these were cannons that no longer was needed um, because from the fort and places like that. Okay. 19th century, probably 19th century cannons, the remains of Grenada's, from the Grenada's forts. And we had a series of forts, and when we get down to Fort George, we will talk about the forts. Okay. St. So, yeah. John Street, this is where the St. John Street. New Year's Day. Oh, they had an accident here. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. St. John Street, again, if, uh, one. Um, what accident? Whatever accident, a terrible accident, but I'm still waiting to hear what, a, I, uh, yeah, oh, what okay. happened, what really happened. Um, this building right here, which is the registrar, is one of the oldest buildings in the town. Um, this would have been a, a brick building. Probably got the steps into it a little bit. Oh, can we go inside? Yeah. Well, let's go inside. I'm going to. The last Cathedral came, of the Immaculate the last time Conception. I came out here was huh? for my niece, Jinelle, her graduation. That time yeah. she went to Mother Rose. Oh, okay. I have a picture with my mother and father standing on the steps when they got married. It's ah, the only thing we have of the... Are you going to share that with us? No. <laughs> <laughs> that is a nativity scene. Welcome to the house of the Lord. We should go film the nativity scene. We are going to see Jesus in the manger. The early 1800s. Um, it's been added on. All of these sanctuaries have been added on later on. The choir is back here. There used to be an old pipe organ. I think they've repaired it. I'm not quite sure. windows but they were destroyed in, in Ivan. Do you know a song? <laughs> I honestly thought was I, I honestly thought was uh, music that was playing there. I didn't know oh, really? you were singing. Oh, I was trying to sing. I well they tried well. That's Joseph and that's Mary. And that's Jesus. He's not sleeping, but he's lying on the manger. And there's a ship. And I must see. So these are the wise men, I guess, the three yes. wise men. And the star. Star of David. Yes. And the kettle. Because it was in the manger. Would I, go ahead, eh? I like the cocoa tree. <laughs> the cocoa tree. Oh yeah. I like that. Cocoa. <laughs> I love this display. Follow that star. Follow, Follow that, that star. star. Oh. oh, this is wonderful. I love it. I love it. If I live in Grenada, I come to church just for this. My mom used to sing in the choir. So. Oh really? So yeah. This is memories. For yes, you. I was baptized. Communed and conformed in this church. Wow. Yeah. And we used to hang, we used to be allowed in this section over here. Give each other? Not, <laughs> I'm not saying that. <laughs> every boy, every little boy gave trouble in he the church. He was something. I used, to be an, I, just, I used to be an acolyte here. He was an acolyte. I used to be an acolyte for about six months or so. 
but I remember um, I think I left because I didn't get to to use the plate and ring the bell because <laughs> so the, older, the older guys like, was doing all the good stuff. He used to drink all the wine. No, I didn't get into wine. I guess it's the reason why he drinks today and I don't. <laughs> That's exactly the reason. So listen, after Christmas, then comes Easter. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is no longer on the cross. He's risen. Oh, but well, why is he thoughts. doing up there now? Good for thoughts. Okay. I found you terrible. No loud talking, no smoking, no chewing of gum, no use of cell phones. And see how you must dress? Okay. Right now you're hot, now you're damaged. Public church, we could look over. And these are some of the original structures on this block. Um, the registrar's office um, is one of the oldest buildings. I think it goes back to the 1700s, the core of it. Um, brick building. The problem with a lot of our buildings, we've put cement over them. And you see all the cracks and stuff because the cement is covering up the lime that was used to to put the bricks together. Mm -hmm. The lime was like the cement. Um, and the lime does not get to breathe, so you end up having decay on the inside of the cement. So a lot of it just falls off in chunks yeah. you know, after a while. Um, we can't go under the church, but there actually are a few priests that have been buried, maybe oh. even a bishop, mm -hmm. really? under the church. Yes, the graves are under the church. Oh my God. Um, when I was a Boy Scout, I'm a Boy Scout troop, used to meet in the back. Yeah. And actually, the, when the gates open, you could actually go in and sometimes you can even walk in and see the graves at the bottom. For real? Yep. Oh. It's a church for real? So yeah, so inside, inside, inside here, yeah, in one of those gate areas, there's some, the gate? there's some graves inside there where, um, so the church is sitting in the graves. Oh, the rain's coming, guys. Oops, yeah, it's coming across. The rain, the rain is coming from the double end. I'm joking. <laughs> when the point is in. Double, everything is there. From the double end. Double end. <laughs> so I said, a lot of, the church owned a lot of this property all the way going back down those streets you. Mm. you know so the church owned quite a lot of the town but the catholic church had owned it under the french but then when the british came the british took the catholic church and property from them mm. so the church ended up moving up to this area um, and come and see the view from there in the early 1800s um, this building actually used to be um, the first electric company or the fourth telephone company used to be here. So it went all the way up to the forts and stuff, um, Fort Matthew, so they bought it from him. It's interesting, he was the Speaker of the House at the time, and he presided over the £20,000 purchase of his own plantation. Yeah. Corruption in government. <laughs> <laughs> it's as old as, it's as old as, uh, um, so Market Hill used to be called Constitution Hill. like one of those fast growing trees there. Uh, it's a Christmas tree. <laughs> oh, so they put a, should have put some lights on it. Yeah. Going down instead of going across or up. It's like a vine. kind of hangs. Yeah. I guess go back to the 1760s. Um, Rambus. These were all 
He could do that? Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. It contains some of the oldest buildings uh, because this was one of the primary streets. Um, now most of the buildings on here are lawyer's office. I'm not quite sure if that's good or bad. Uh, <laughs> it's not, it was a residential street, but you don't find too many houses that people live here. I think these are the oldest house people live. This one over here and the Priory, but that's it. Uh, all of these have been turned into businesses. Uh, the school, the Heinze School, um, used to be known as Jackie School before that because he, Jacobs was the, um, the principal. Um, Heinze was from Mount Morris, um, one of the first Mount Morris people to branch out outside of the, the village of Mount Morris. Um, this school came here in the early 1900s, uh, I think by 1910. Of 19 teens, it was built and it was, it was called the church hall. So the Anglican church would use this. That's why it has an open space. And even today, the school basically is still there are no classrooms in there in, 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 a, in a modern school, but it's just separated by the boards and stuff like that. That's so it's an open hall. This, um, these, uh, these one, two, three, they're called sedan coaches. Uh, this was put up. In I guess 2012, I remember them putting this stuff up. So it's the, they believe that these architectural features were based on a European uh, model. Uh, they're called sedan porches because people used to be carried in sedan chairs and they would be deposited right at the base of it and then they could easily walk into your house. Okay. So it was uh, like, yeah. so that's what it'd be. Okay, I yeah. doubt okay. any of, I doubt that would have been used as such here. But it's just an architectural feature that was adopted as you know people build in their houses with, with these uh, put these things up. So yeah, so that's when the, the crack was put up. Washington DC diaspora. Yes, there was a big thing about a diaspora, but it has not there's still some stuff, but twelve is really when it took off, I guess. Um, so here's one of the other sedan porches. Um, as you can see it has been adopted. Um, for use, uh, but again, a lot of the buildings. And there's another sign. This one was put up by the National Trust uh, many moons ago. Um, you could, these are some, and this is how you best protect these buildings mm -hmm. by leaving the bricks and stuff open, and allowing them to breathe. Because if you yeah. put cement over it, you basically causes the decay on the inside of the cement and big chunks of the wall in the falling right. out which is what we have done to a lot of the buildings right. because it was the easiest way yeah. at the time and the most economic there's a space between here right here, so they here. allow it to breathe because be below there is lime white lime is what they use to, to put up these structures so this is uh, probably one of the better preserved because of that and this one also has a, a plaque on it that was put the well but I guess it's not used that much because they've moved. Um, but they still own the building. Um, a full, a full yeah. modern photo studio. It used to be a parent. Down. Right down. Are you still there? Yeah. yeah. Wow. So this, all these, these buildings have been abandoned. Um, actually, I was um, walking out here yesterday and there were people from the tourist boat. And I heard one of them said, the town is really shabby, isn't it? Oh. And I couldn't help but respond. I'm like, yeah, it kind of is. Um, I did ask them where they were from, and they were from Barbados. <laughs> so I was interested. This building over here is called the Priory. And it was where the priests lived before they moved up to the vicarate. Little house on the Priory. <laughs> uh, it's one of the oldest buildings in St. George's and one of the prettiest. So what happens there now? Nothing? It's a private residence. Okay. It's a private residence. Um, as you can see, it's right next to the church. So this is where the Catholic church used to be Ooh. before there was an Anglican church. Right. And oh, this so is where the, the priests Anglican lived who were, yes, because it became, the, the Anglicans took it from the Catholic. This property would have been the, the, the church that go, went back to the 1700s. Um, and the Catholic took it over in the 1790s and it's remained theirs. 
And this church, actually, the original structure is getting ready to celebrate 200 years. Ooh. This in 26, I guess, in um, 2026. It should be celebrated around that time 200. is when... That's a milestone. Um, it's 200, I said, right? Yes. 18, 19, yeah, yeah, yeah. As you can see, they just finished with a Some year... steps. A year ago, um, where they redid the, the roof and were able to preserve it. Um, this is one of the other little alleyways. This used to be all, you know, I think they re when they redid it, they just put some of the stones in the center to kind of show what it was because people complained that the heels got stuck in the, in the, in the, in the stones. So they did it this way to preserve some element of what it used to look like. But again, oh, so all, of these, all of these places would have been private residents. All of these, we have all photographs of Church Street that really show um, the prominent families that would have lived on in St. George's lived along this. Because it's really an interesting area. Even at all the people go home, it's really quiet. So yeah, so here is the Anglican Church, and he says this used to be the, Catholic, the first Catholic church, big Catholic church that was built was built here, and the property was taken away from the. Catholic during the struggle between the French and the British okay, and Grenada, which resulted. Open, like they do have it open sometimes. They do have it open sometimes. Um, Father Myers, you're looking at this video. Please explain why it's locked. I want to go in there. Dexter Leonard. Where is it locked? They have no jurisdiction over this church. I know. It's open. It's there open. you go. The gate is open. <laughs> I want to go in there. So yeah, all of these buildings. I mean, Church Churchy had some of the high, highest buildings on the island. We're talking about two and three stories. So all of these older buildings. Uh, all right. And if you look down Church Street, there were lots of these buildings. Um, Core Bank have taken over most of them. Uh, Bank, remember, remember started in that one little that little building one down little, there, yeah. and now they own on both sides of the street. So, even though Church Street, even though the Presbyterian Church looks like it's part of Church Street, it's not. It's on Granite Gang Road. And this alley back here is Simmons Alley, I think. And that used to be called, I forget the name of the street now. Uh, but it's really these little alleyways and stuff are really, really cool in Grenada. I think what we should do is actually put a lot of murals and stuff in these and have these places for people to go explore, explore the town. Because some of them are really cool. Then we have the steps that take you down to Scott Street. Okay. This alleyway here takes you down to Young Street. So you have that connects the city on all these different levels. And you see some of it when you look at the movie Island in the Sun. It was filmed in the 50s um, in Grenada. Uh, you would see some of these really cool architecture and how the town looked back then. Because a lot of the filming was done around here um, and in, 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 the, in the town. So you, you see some of the older houses all had a little courtyard. Yeah. A lot of the, and sometimes when you went inside of them, they had the courtyard in the back. That was common to all of the buildings, many of the buildings along the streets. This bank building here, before that, it used to be, there was a big two-story building there that was called Lamoli House. Because the name of the guy that owned it was Lamoli. Ah. And it was a lot of business and things used to take place in here. And we believe that this area here was a slave yard. That slaves were kept here to be sold. Oh, really? Yes. So that's where most slaves were not sold in Market Square, as people believe. Slaves were actually sold out of slave yards or the Karanaz. I believe this is one of them as well because we have an advertisement from 1799 that said they would be sold at Lamoli House. So most likely it would have been would have been in the in this area um, in the back of the building. People are writing. People are writing false information. Well, I think I read I, that the slaves were brought to the market square to be auctioned. No, that's that's. These, I think sometimes people take things from other places and assume oh that that's how it happened God. here. I think for most, we can we realize that the ships came on the Karanai. That's where all of the ships came. We have we have records of 550 ships that came throughout the, the British period anyway. We don't have much for the French period. 
But on the carnage, there were lots of slave yards. Many, many slaves were sold from the ships or in these yards. So, so that's where you find a lot of that. In Halifax Street. Here's one of the older buildings that were just reopened as a hotel, the city hotel. Oh, it's the city uh, Yeah, okay. <laughs> What's the car coming from? Um, actually, the building that was here before this is of a similar structure. If you look at the old image, we have one picture of what La Molly House looked like. Um, and supposedly there's a story, a ghost story, of this building. And I actually have a cousin who works here and she says they still talk about it. They're afraid to go into the basement. Supposedly, the guy um, that owned it, Passy, um, he had died and he wanted to be buried in England or somewhere. But in order to preserve his body, they took it and put it in a barrel of rum. But the watchman or whoever, the security, didn't know that he was in the barrel of rum and he kept drinking from. Oh, God. So just, I don't know how thing, but even today, people believe in this story that this building, that the, the remains of this guy haunts the building. So what um, become of, of his body? I don't, I'm not even sure what eventually happened, if it were or if it was buried, or I would assume it would have been at some point, but there is that weird story um, about this building and that it's still there in the workers today in this new building that they say sometimes they're afraid to go into the basement. I sound like they see that runs the run. <laughs> I should have been having it still. Five a barrel around from 1700. Is, is a little steep here to get you know. So Halifax Street goes all the way down to St. John Street to the back. Um, the police here has been a fixture. Uh, don't, we're putting in traffic lights, so it would be interesting to see uh, traffic lights 2.0. Uh, let's see how it works this time. Um, but it would be interesting to see how they function in terms of controlling the traffic, which is done by one policeman. And of course, here leads to the market square. We have images of here where there were actually people living like a shanty town in this area and places like that. A lot of people squatted on, on, on government property lands and stuff. Um, this area going back up is really the oldest part of the town, um, oh, really? the government section in, of the town. Because remember, I it's told you coming. that we didn't. The market square didn't open until the 1780s, right? Because this place was swamp some of this area was swamped so it wasn't until they really um, got rid of the swamp that they, that they opened the market square and stuff here the market square would have been down at the bottom of Young Street and the Carnival so a lot of the, the official stuff was up this way so we can go up to Granny Tang Road that remains um, there actually used to be a big cistern here so to collect water mm -hmm. um, I have no idea where it went when it went, but there's an old photograph we have with it, with it there. So again, the Presbyterian Church was built in the 1830s. Um, yes, the 1830s. Um, that used to be the site of the courthouse. The first courthouse that was built would have been on here. Um, and that was destroyed by fire. I think it might have been the 1772 fire. We had a big fire in St. George's and it destroyed it. And then in the 1830s, the plot was given to the Presbyterians uh, to build their church because they had moved up the Parliament building. Um, York House was already owned by the government and that's where they ended up expanding it to cater for the, the coast. Uh, you can see they just rebuilt. Yes. But they did it on the original part of the building was to the left, and they built to the right. Yeah, I they could kept tell. the steeple, the church was this way. Mm. Um, so they had to remove a bunch of graves, and not the, the they, they removed the, 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 the headstones because the cemetery used to be on this side. Right. And we have this really cool story of this guy that was buried here, I think maybe in the 1840s um, or 1850s actually. But he he was his he had died in 1784 or 85, but he wasn't buried until a hundred, almost tons of years, uh, maybe a, close to a hundred years later. No, less than a hundred. Sorry, 70 years. Or so his body was kept in a vault in a lead casket somewhere in the town above ground. I guess they had intended to take the body back to Europe, 
so you had to bury it. You could only transport a body if it was in a lead casket. Um, and he was, but I guess they didn't do it. And one of his daughters decided to finally bury him. He was buried in the graveyard here. Um, we've been looking for the headstone, but we haven't been able to find it. But we have a record that it was there from somebody um, who did that. Um, wow. And all of these, like I said, the the Fort George, which was Fort Royal under the French, um, was the first fort that was built here. And even though the sign says 1710 or 1706, it really is um, the 1660s is when the first fort was built up here. The French built the first fort and then they expanded it um, from 16, 1706 to 1710. And that's where we have Fort George, but then the British added other stuff to it as well. But the, okay. the original structure was the, was the, um, the so French. Well, it's not, it's, it's based on information we have at different times. Once we do more research and find out more things, then we can update the information we have. So this used to be a hotel um, before, which one? Recently, this place here, it actually served as the CID, but not destroyed in Ivan. But before that, it used to be, um, shoot, how can I forget the name of it? I forgot. I could send you a picture of it, so okay. you can add to it. Um, so it was a, it was the basically one of the first city hotels. Oh, it's cooler here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm trying to see. It was a guest house. I guess it was. Hospital was Hill. House. So yeah, the hospital. This is not Hospital Hill. This would have been Granny Town. Remember, the hospital was going the other way. So this is the later hospital. This. When we go up, we can talk about the hospital once we. I'm trying to find the name of the hotel. Yeah, shoot. Brandon Hotel. For some reason, I think Hennigas House comes to mind, but I don't think that's it. So yeah, government structure basically started up on the hill. Um, even the first governor used to live in that space on the ground there. That was where one of the... Um, but it got burned in 1772. So the town had a really big fire. Um, we had about three big fires. We had a big one in the carnage where a boat caught fire, rum, fueled it, and a bunch of things burned. But the big fire was in 1772, and I think there was a later one. I can't remember the date. But we had about three major fires in the town to destroy records and things like that in buildings. Of that road. Um, I know that you've seen the church, you've seen the schools. Where's in the cemetery? So this is like, so this wow. is basically the ridge, the ridge that cuts the town in two. So we have the Carinage town and we have Bay town. And Church Street is like a ridge um, that, based, that cuts the town in these two different parts. And we built the Sendal Tunnel back in the late 1800s to cut through there to make it easy. You don't have to go over the hills to get over. So you just cut through, cut through the tunnel. So I know it was not built in 1706, it was built in 1600 and 1660s was 1660s. when the first structure and then we had the, fr the French actually made it bigger. All of these big front parts of it, the bastions of the front, they were all redone. They were added because basically if you look up at Old Fort, Old Fort is higher than it. Okay. So that's why they built these bastions that are bigger. So we kept, so we built here, then we recognized there's a higher hill there. So we built there, the forts, the, the batteries up there. But then we went up finally after the French came in 1779 and took the island by taking those forts because they came from higher hills. Over here, we ended up going and built stuff up there as well. So we ended up right. hill yep. upon hill upon hill until we got to the highest one. Right. So that's where Fort Frederick and Fort Matthew and Fort Adolphus and Fort Lucas. Were built, but nobody remembers Lucas and Adolphus because they were smaller and people have built their houses around them. Right. So there's a whole series, and those are the only forts that really didn't see the type of battle that these guys, these two others saw, except during the US invasion, where um, Fort Machu was bombed 
supposedly accidentally because they said they were unaware that it was a mental institution and Fort Frederick was used as um, a base for the Grenada military.